Hi, I'm Marty Greif, author of the book, True Connections, Relationship Marketing in the Digital World. And today we're going to talk about how to create a good landing page for your, your visitors, for your courses. So with that in mind, let me ask the following question. And I know this is going to seem like a strange question, but are you selfish? I'm guessing probably not just because you've created a course. But having said that, and asking the question, are you selfish? Let me share the answer. You are selfish. We're all selfish, you know, and it's not because you're a bad person. It's because you're human. We are hardwired to be selfish. Uh, if you think about it, 50,000 years ago, our ancestors were living in caves, eating a hunk of raw meat and, uh, Everything was all about survival and, and procreation and uh, just having enough food, shelter, and so on. As a matter of fact, uh, according to uh, American psychologist Abraham Maslow, uh, all human behavior is based upon what he calls his hierarchy of needs, but it's really based on, on being hardwired to be selfish at the lowest level are the physiological needs that we just talked about, air, water, shelter, sleep, clothing, reproduction. And then it moves up. When you satisfy the first level, you move up to the second level. Safety needs, personal needs, security, and so on. Then love and belonging, esteem, self-actualization. Well, you might ask yourself, what does this have to do with digital marketing? And if you bear with me a moment or two, uh, I'm going to share that. But first, let me prove that you're selfish. For those of you who are sitting there saying, I'm not selfish, I'm a good person. I'm not arguing whether you're a good person or not. But have you ever been to, let's say, an event, uh, a trade show, a meeting somewhere, and you get introduced to new people, and within seconds, you've forgotten their name? Why? Because we're selfish. We all do it. We're all interested in our own being what it is that we need to feel good and some new person gets introduced to us and we could care less it doesn't make you a bad person it makes you human but you know what it's not just maslow who said this uh socrates said you know people engage in good behavior mainly for self-preservation or and fear of punishment right uh Thomas Hobbes, uh, even voluntary acts like helping others or doing one's duty have ulterior motive and derives one pleasure. You know, I'll, I'll give an example. If you give to charity, why do you give to charity? All right. And again, I'm not suggesting that you've got really bad ulterior motives. You're not doing it on purpose, but you give to charity because of how it makes you feel inside. You see something on TV about pets or children or whatever it is, and you feel bad. And so what do you do? You call that number, you, you put in your credit card, you are trying to feel better. That's what we do. And then of course, my favorite, uh, good old uh, Sigmund Freud, uh, human nature is fundamentally animalistic and egocentric, all right? And he goes on, social norms and rules are necessary to control human impulses. Without it, society would be in chaos and everyone seeks their self-interest. Well, good old uh, Sigmund probably had a point. Having said that, what's the issue? Well, the issue is no matter how good your intentions are, you're going to get caught up in selfish behaviors. You're human. You know, we are wired to act on instinct. And so today's discussion is really about how do you overcome these inherent selfish behaviors to create a good web type? something that will attract your visitor to want to sign up for your course. Well, here's the deal. It's not about you. It's about the visitor. And this is what relationship marketing is all about. This is what conversion rate optimization is about. And so today we're just talking about conversion rate optimization on your website. So this slide here is probably the most important slide in the deck. So this explains what conversion rate optimization is. It's where you marry user intent with website experience and your company goals. 
When you put all of these together, that's where conversion rate optimization happens. It's in the middle. It's where the action happens. It's where the intent meets the website experience and their goals. And with all three in alignment, that's when subscriptions to your course will happen. All right, let me give you an example of this alignment. And about us page is probably the most self-centered page on any website. And here's an example of an about us page for a really nice organization. I know these people, uh, Blue Bungalow. And they've got what we call basically an army of words marching around their page looking for meaning. This is normal. This is where we do what I call the opera school of marketing. And what is that? Me, me, me. It's all about me. It's not about you. So if you think about it, we want to avoid that opera school of marketing. So if this was the, uh, the before, let's talk about what happened with an after. And here's the after example. By focusing on the visitor, their conversion rate for new visitors increased by 31%. The average time on their page increased by 76%. Their exit rate decreased by 20%. And this resulted in more sales and more email signups. And by the way, this isn't an eye test where you have to go look at what, what the whole page said. Let me show you what we did here. You'll notice that even in the About Us page, we turned this page, which is typically a very self-centered page, and we turned it into something about the visitor. So one of the techniques that we used here was by bolding certain words. So if you read all of it, welcome to Blue Bungalow, the home of flattering fashion. We're so pleased you found your way here. The internet can be a little daunting if you've had a bad experience. So that is about them. But you'll notice what happened here is flattering, safe place, your friend in fashion, feel confident, look your absolute best. All of this was bolded. Well, again, what are we doing? We're making something that is very much about Blue Bungalow and turning it into something that is about the visitor. And so what's the trick that we're using here? Obviously, we're bolding things because people don't read. So if you make it really easy for people to scan, and yes, some people will read it, but even if they do read it completely, the bold words will stand out. And we've tested this time and time again. By, by making this inviting for the visitor, it increases the conversion rate. So let's talk about what happens when somebody lands on a website. They basically ask themselves three questions. And what are those three questions? Am I in the right place? How do I feel about this site? And what am I supposed to do here? And let's talk about each one of those in, in some detail. The first question, Am I in the right place? Well, you wanna make sure you match the visitor intent with their expectations. And, and I always say, don't make your visitors think. And with that in mind, why don't you make your visitors think? Well, every time you make your visitor think, you're using up a little of their patience. And frankly, you don't know how much patience they have before they even show up on your website. You don't know if they've had a bad day. You don't know if they had a fight with their spouse. You don't know if the dog peed on the rug. You have no idea what's going on in their life. So because of that, every time you make somebody think, you're using up a little of that patience. And if you use up too much of it, they're gonna leave your site. They're gonna bounce. They're not gonna to subscribe to your course. So let me give you an example. So did a Google search for solitaire diamond rings and up comes a really nice uh, ad that talked about solitaire engagement rings. But then when I land on the page, and this is their mobile version, you know, I just blew it up. I don't know that these are solitaire rings. Now, some of you know what a solitaire ring is, but if I was younger and maybe buying an engagement ring for my fiance to be, right? And uh, she told me she wanted a solitaire diamond ring. And I looked at this, I have no idea if I'm in the right place. This is making me think. So let's look at the same exact query, solitaire diamond rings. And again, you go and you have a nice little ad. But when I land on the page, it says solitaire diamond rings. I don't have to think. So what happens? I get here, and I'll exaggerate a little bit, but I get here and I'm like, oh, I found it. I'm in the right place. But not making me think what you're doing here is making it a lot easier for me to make a decision to move forward with you. Another example 
And this is something that um, we see in the United States. You may not be familiar with uh, progressive home insurance, but the, uh, the Google query was New York homeowners insurance quote. We then get an ad that talks about a quote. And then I get this really nice page that I land on. The problem is I don't know if they sell insurance in New York or not. So I have to put in a zip code and I have to see if they sell insurance for my area. I don't know if they do. And you might say, well, of course they do. They advertise for it. Well, you know what? Um, I don't know about where you are, but I will tell you, I've recently had the experience where I was searching to replace my cable and I did a search for a cable and something like this actually came up. And when I put it in my zip code, up came a message. Sorry, we don't cover your area. Really? I, you just paid money for me to click on an ad and you don't cover my area. So don't make me think. On the other hand, this is one we did for a client of ours. Same exact query. Now you'll notice the ad talks about New York insurance. And when I land on the page, it talks about New York homeowners insurance. It matches the user intent. It delivers on what was promised. And I don't have to think. And so whenever you are putting up some type of messaging, and from that messaging, they land on your page. Or even within the page, they go from one section to another. If you have a link and you promise something, when they go on that link to wherever it takes them, make sure that it matches word for word so that people don't have to think. How do I feel about this site? Well, that's the next question. Well, frankly, if you've got a well-executed design and, and the builder, I will tell you, the builder uh, that you can use really looks uh, excellent. It, it creates really attractive sites with the templates. Uh, and it allows you to do things like social proof and security seals. You just have to put them in the right place. So let's talk about one. Let me give you an example. I did a, a search for grills. It turns out that you can buy a Weber Summit E470 grill, and it's almost $2,000 US. I don't know. I didn't know that grills cost that much, but it does. And I could buy this. But what do I have on here that makes me feel good? Well, it's a modern kind of design, right? But there's really nothing that makes me know that Academy Sports and Outdoors is a site that I would feel comfortable with, as opposed to here's a competitive site to theirs. And it's got all sorts of trust badges. It's got reviews, right? It's got a phone number in the top right-hand corner. And I will tell you that we've tested this time and time again, but a phone number in the top right-hand corner or a click to call icon on mobile, either is fine. It's the biggest trust symbol on the face of the planet in every single country that we've ever tested this. And by having that, yes, it increases phone calls, but it also increases conversions. And if you're not going to answer the phone, as long as you have a really wonderful voicemail system that doesn't make people want to hang themselves, then they're still going to move forward with you. So as long as your voicemail system, and this is what I say, gives them love or provides love, they will still feel good about you. So that's an example of how do I feel about this? Let me show you another example. This is one where they do what is known as tax grievance. Tax grievance is a process whereby you can uh, go to the county you live in and say, you're charging me too much for my taxes and I would like to pay less taxes because my house is not worth what you think my house is worth. So this fellow, Mark Lewis, has a site. Well, that's great, but it doesn't really tell me anything about Mark Lewis, his company, or that I should feel good about him. In the same area that he does this is this site. And on this site, it's got phone numbers. It says it's Long Island's number one tax grievance. It's got tr a trust bar with Better Business Bureau and Google ratings and Facebook ratings and check boxes. They offer the same service, but which site is more credible? Which one answers the question uh, in a positive way? How do I feel about this site? Well, you know what? I feel pretty good about this one. Didn't feel so good about the other one. So if, again, if you're writing for the visitor and you think about what it is they need to move forward, you wanna make sure that you add some trust. What am I supposed to do here? Well, you want to make sure that you have visual emphasis that really directs the visitor's attention to the right place. Make sure that your calls to action 
are organized and presented in a simple and coherent manner. So let me give an example of that. So here on this Everton site, and, and these are again, some nice people in Australia, um, but when I land on their site in the old days, it basically shows me, I don't know, uh, some knives and I guess a pot or something. And uh, I guess that's what they sell. And you could argue, well, you know what? They, they've got a, a nav bar up in the top so I can see what it is, but we turn that into this. And this absolutely became extremely high converting because if you look at it, you've got different categories. We are visual creatures. We look at these categories. And if I'm looking for bakeware or cookware, I know I'm in the right place. They've got their trust on here. So I feel really good about it. And I know what I'm supposed to do. And what am I supposed to do here? I'm either meant to click on one of the categories or there's links underneath it for subcategories. And this makes it so much easier for me to be able to figure out what am I supposed to do here? So on this last example here, it answers all the questions. It answers, you know, am I in the right place? How do I feel about this? And what am I supposed to do here? It answers all three questions. Let me show you one for a course. So for Oxford seminars, to learn how to teach English as a second language. They've got all sorts of things. You could, you could find a course, you could find an info se session, you could request information, you've got country. Basically, this is completely and totally overwhelming and is not even remotely helpful. By turning that into this with really clear calls to action, see where you can teach, find my course. That's basically it, right? Yes, there's other links on here. There's other things you can do. It's got, you know, trust on here. It's got all sorts of good stuff, but we made it really simple for the visitor to know what it is they're supposed to do here. So in summary, let's talk about these things before I move into a couple live examples from the builder. So in summary, three questions. Am I in the right place? You need to match the visitor intent. Why are they coming? What are they looking for? Do you deliver upon what was promised in that upstream messaging? So don't make your visitors think, how do I feel about this site? You wanna have a well-executed design. Thank God the builder does that for you. You wanna make sure that you've got social proof, security seals, you know, anything that's available that builds trust and you wanna put them in the right place and you want a visual emphasis to direct the visitor's attention. And uh, you wanna make sure that your navigation and calls to action are organized and clear. Truly clear.